today and every day. It was a joy to be with my fellow Dominican priests and, and, and brothers to have this Last Supper. Each day we eat together, but today in a special way we, we celebrate this Mass of the Lord's Supper and remember all that He has accomplished in our life and all He's sent us to do. And so with each of you, I, I, we cannot have each of you at our refectory and celebrate supper each day, but each year we gather together, and I thank you for being here at this, this Supper of the Lord, the Lord's Supper, where we may offer the true sacrifice and eat the true banquet, the eternal banquet of our Lord. A wonderful thing in our Dominican tradition is that uh, we would actually have the washing of the feet in our refectory, which is our dining room. And there the prior and the, the friars in the past were a company, or custom rather, to, to serve one another the meal. And even today we have a sense of that in our own priory, where the, the, the first, the prior, eats last. And Father Dismas, the sub-prior with me, we eat last. And while the food comes to us, but in that place, the refectory that would be on Holy Thursday, that the prior, as part of that, those prayers before the dinner, would, would wash the feet of his brothers. And so that we, we do today. We remember that which the Lord has sent us to do. And we also remember, if you noticed, those who observe our bulletin, Father, Father Gabriel was to preach, but he has a high fever these days. And so, so I will, as our friend, Father Francisco Vicente would say, I don't have anything that much prepared, but just to share some sapiencia cordis, some wisdom of the heart that he would always say. I don't think he ever prepared a homily, really. I think he always spoke with the wisdom of the heart, but being a Dominican so long, he could do that. Uh, finally, after, we always, I love Portland. I love the Northwest. Our whole liturgy depends upon the rain. And so, <laughs> depending on the sign from the ushers, the people will depart and the priests will follow out, out the side door if the, if the rain is heavy. If the rain is light, then we'll all precede people first and then the priests out the back door and into the main door of Siena Hall. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I have called you friends. This gospel is from chapter 13 of the Gospel of John, and it just begins the liturgy. We've just begun a, a service, if you will, that lasts for three days. This is the greatest days of our, of our ecclesiastical year. We begin with the sign of the cross a few minutes ago with this chair, and we don't end with a blessing until then the Easter vigil after those who even then come out of the world and are reborn in baptism, receive the Eucharist for the first time, and only then do we offer the blessing then, the blessing of the resurrected Christ. We begin here, and we begin also a gospel. This part of the gospel, John, will lead uh, directly into where we'll pick up this same gospel, 20 minutes till midnight tonight, when some of us, a very few of us, and a few of the friars, will be present to read the last discourse of Christ. For after the Lord washes the feet of the disciples, He will then tell them. He will give them His final teachings of what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be one with Him in the priesthood. And then He will call down upon them the Holy Spirit and, according to our understanding, ordain them then to that ministry that He then shares with the Father, that He as High Priest then bestows upon we who share in His priesthood that ministry of ministering to the body of Christ, to the people of God. This idea of friendship is interesting. Friend is so misused today. Friend, in recent times, as I said before, is no longer a noun, but has somehow become a verb. When did that happen? What does friend mean? Friend is so misused. Friend can mean someone, especially who does something for us, gives us what we want, satisfies some need in us. But that we know from the ancient philosophers and from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
is not what's meant by friend at all. When he calls his disciples friends, he says, everything I have heard from the Father, I have shared with you. There is a pure relationship among the Lord and his disciples, which is so, at first, so, so mind-boggling that the divine can share with, with that which are mere creatures. But he says, everything I have, I have given to you. The Lord shares every joy, every victory, every every grace that He has with us. And, as a friend, as a true friend, He shares His sorrows and His difficulties, His passion and His cross with each one of us. He shares all these things with us. And He says, if you are My friends, you will keep My commandments. If you are My friends, you will hear My words and you will follow Me. The true friend is present at every birthday, at every celebration, at every laugh. The true friend is present when, you're, when the other has to go under sorrow, weeps, suffers from chemotherapy, or whatever the scourge, the cross might be. That's where the true friend is in every joy and every sorrow. And that's where the Lord is in our life. The friend who is there and gives us the joy of every gift of the Holy Spirit. The friend who is with us in every cross that we carry. And He would ask us to be friends as well. Friends with Him who are there and rejoice in the Last Supper. Who are there and share that joy with Him that His joy may be complete. And He asks us also to be with him on his cross and not abandon him, not to run away when the robbers come, when the betrayer kisses him, but to be present with him all along the way and come to the very foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of God, with Mary Magdalene, with John, the beloved disciple. The Lord is our friend and would ask us to the best of our ability as mere creatures to be his friend as well to share all that He endures. Now we might share the cross with Him, but enjoy the fullness of the resurrection. Pope St. John Paul II, back in 1997, had meditated on this passage of the apostles as friends of Christ. And how the Lord, in a special way, draws us into the mystery of holy orders. And though I've only been a priest only one short decade, one meditates on the joys of the priesthood. The ability to be with the people of God. The ability to minister to them. The ability, the the privilege, then, though amidst many difficulties as for the pastoral and especially the, 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 the life of leadership in the church of all those headaches, still time to pray and to meditate on the words of God. What a joy. It's a, it's a prefigurement, a foretaste of the life to come where we nourish ourselves on the word of God in eternity. And yet, there is something more. There's that other aspect. We see in Christ the priest, the high priest, that we celebrated just a few months ago, the sovereign high priest and king, Christ, the Lord of the universe, that suffers on the cross. It's a humbling thing to be a priest as well. It's a humbling thing to come before the altar. You know you're not worthy to step into the sanctuary. No one is, except for Him. This is really highlighted, especially for in the place where I first found the Lord, or I should say the Lord found me, in the Byzantine liturgy where in humility we come before the Lord. We're not even vested yet. And we pray then that the Lord would have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Mother of God, have mercy on me, your servant. We see that in the old liturgies too, which we have at 11 o'clock on Sunday. The first thing we ask for mercy from God The Lord's mercy is ever ready to be bestowed. His love is immense, but we are not always ready to receive it. 
And so we ask then that our heart, our mind, our soul be expanded to receive that mercy of God. This is most profoundly felt, I think, as a priest, as the ordained priest who who is called then to share in the ministry of Christ and indeed to pronounce in the first person the very words of Christ, this is my body. The priesthood is not wizardry. It's humbling to know that the Lord offered this in purity of heart with his whole divine mind offered this is an intention to lay down his life for us when he offered, according to the order of Melchizedek, not any other sacrifice, not sheep and goat, but bread and wine, but not even that really. For when he offered bread and wine, he says, this is my body, this is my blood, which will be given up for you. And we rejoice in this mystery, this one sacrifice offered for all time by Christ at the supper, at the cross, in the eternity before the Father. We rejoice in that. But the priest is ever reminded in the words he speaks, this is my body. This is my blood offered for you. It's a humbling thing. The common priesthood, all the faithful, share in this ministry too. It's not an easy time to live, is it? A lot of troubles in the church and in the world. We could point many fingers, but let the world point his fingers. We rather point the heart. We point the intentions of our prayer towards those who need it. And we offer in our own way ourselves upon this altar that this is my body, this is my blood, these are my prayers, this is my heart, this is my mind for the intention of the world. These are my words that speak not my own will, but your words of wisdom, your words of patience, your words of love to a world who so desperately need them. The Lord, we have this great witness today. The Lord Jesus, after eating supper with his disciples, washed their feet and said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? I, who am the Lord and your Master, I have given you an example so that you may believe. Peter articulates a rejection I think many of us would have, summarizing, Lord, why are you doing this? This does not belong to you to do. For Peter has come to know who the Lord is. He has said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why are you demeaning yourself, taking off your outer garment, getting on your knees, and doing something even our Jewish slaves will not do, but washing the filth off the feet of us? But the Lord says, I have given you example that you may do likewise. When the Lord says, I have come to serve and not to be served, he puts these words into action. And it is something that, that while we rejoice in the victory of the cross, while we rejoice in the beauty and the formative aspect of our sacred liturgy celebrated with solemnity, we must ever take to heart that, that example of Christ who humbles himself and washes the feet of his apostles. I think that we do not understand in our age what this sign meant and why, after 2,000 years, we choose to imitate and to reenact this washing of the feet, the humility of the Lord in this respect. And today, as I said, I will wash the feet of my brothers who I serve as prior. But each of us in our hearts must wash the feet of our brethren. Let us wash the feet of our brothers and sisters wherever they may be. To wash the filth of hurt and sin, of sadness, of despair 
off their faces, off their hands, off their feet, that we might imitate the Lord, to imitate His example, and preach not just with word, but by action, what it means to be a disciple of Christ, what it means to be a priest ordained, and to be a member of the priesthood of the faithful, to live, to preach with our words and with our action the mystery of Christ. For the world, as I said, no, understand, no long, longer understands what it means to be friends. Friends have become functional, selfish. But the Christian friend, the friend of Christ, is life-giving, is renewing, is a mystery that grants hope. In the union of the divine with the human, even with those who created in the divine image, with those who are as well, but do not yet know this mystery in them, that they will understand the dignity to which they are called. The Lord has given us this example. And today, as some of you know me, and my brothers especially, this may not be the sign I would have chosen. And so it is in your life, whatever it may be, the service to the other is not the sign you would have chosen. But that's where the Lord is. The Lord goes to those difficult places, the dark places of humanity and society and of the human heart, and speaks that word of reminder, that word of challenge, that word for some of us, when we first hear it, is difficult to hear. The Lord loves you. The Lord has created you in His image. And the Lord, above all, desires that you be His friend, that everything He has received from the Father, He might share with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.